The Brownsville Police Department responded to a call of a robbery at this Exxon gas station. As coronavirus cases continue to rise in West Tennessee, Henderson County Mayor Eddie Bray says it's time to do a thorough cleaning right here at the Henderson County Courthouse to remove any viruses or germs that may have been left behind by visitors. Nowadays, you just can't go anywhere without a mask, so masks just like these will be given out right here at the First Presbyterian Church on North Highland Avenue in Jackson. The giveaway started at 5 o'clock and will end at 7. So come on out and get yourself a free mask. A community discussion is set to be held in just a few minutes right here at the AMP to talk about Confederate monuments in front of the Jackson Madison County Courthouse lawn. That's right, Brad, Terry, everyone is in the Christmas spirit. I know I am. As you can see, everybody right here is at the Christmas in the Commons event that just started about an hour ago and will end in a few minutes. Also, Freed Hardeman University will be hosting its 56th annual benefit dinner tonight, which will start in about a few hours. So it's just going to be a fun night for everyone here. Take a look at the Santa house, all the lights. I mean, it's just really festive out here and some of the families I spoke to to say they are just excited to be out here. I spoke to the organizer of the Santa House and he tells me that there are COVID-19 precautions that are being taken place tonight to make sure that everyone is safe out here. Firefighters responded around 3 a.m. to reports of heavy smoke and the sound of smoke detectors going off at this apartment complex located on East Maple Street. TDOT Commissioner Clay Bright says the coronavirus has impacted travel plans for many people this 4th of July holiday. Holiday. Fewer drivers will be traveling through Tennessee and lane closures will be in place to make it a little safer and help you get to where you want to go safely. The fire started around four o'clock in the morning over the weekend. And as you can see, this is what's left of what used to be a repair shop. The West Tennessee community is coming together to let their voices be heard. And as you can see behind me, protesters are gathered in front of City Hall for a peaceful protest. The Jackson Police Department has confirmed that Cassie Taylor has been safely located. A post was made on social media that she had been kidnapped and held hostage. Shoppers in the columns are getting a jump start on their holiday shopping. The stores are packed and they say they're ready to get those unbeatable deals. A toddler locked in a cage at this Henry County trailer. It's hard to find something that will shock my conscience that, that says, oh my gosh, I've never seen this before. The toddler's mother, 42-year-old Heather Scarbo, was arrested along with the child's stepfather, 46-year-old T.J. Brown and 82-year-old Charles Brown. The looks of the kennel, you could tell the child stays in there a lot. So we announced our presence and entered the trailer. As we entered the trailer, you could see uh, a lot of things going on inside the trailer. Not only are they facing charges of child neglect, Henry County Sheriff deputies found more than 700 animals in and around their trailer, including dogs, snakes, mice, and chickens living in poor conditions. Thousands of, of cockroaches, maggots. Kitchen is unlivable. There's more. Investigation went on. We discovered uh, the subject did have an outdoor marijuana grow there as well. Uh, we wound up seizing 127 marijuana plants. We also seized 17 guns from the premises as well. Investigators say the charges range from child abuse, animal abuse, weapons, and more. The truth is we never really know what our neighbors next door are doing. And it's important that this serve as a, as a warning and a reminder to everyone to keep an eye out. Carrie Mallard was originally charged with sexual abuse last year, but he returned to court Friday on new charges. Uh, he was originally charged with one count of continuous sexual abuse of a minor. He made bond on that charge. The Henderson County Sheriff's Office says that original investigation started in October of last year, involving alleged sexual abuse of a child. During the investigation, the sheriff's office says a five-year-old victim detailed continuous sexual abuse. Initially, investigators say Mallard denied the allegations, but later admitted to some of the accusations, and he was charged with one count of continuous sexual abuse of a minor.
Later, additional victims came forward, according to the sheriff's office. Because Mallard's home was considered a daycare, the investigation continued. Mallard was arrested on the sealed indictments on June 2nd and arraigned in circuit court at the Henderson County Criminal Justice Center on June 5th. We'll have court again. Um, I think we'll have an appearance date, and then they'll have another court date set after that for trial. Protests erupted for the sixth day across the U.S. over the death of George Floyd, who died at the hands of a police officer in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Even right here in West Tennessee, communities are coming together to let their voices be heard, including city officials and law enforcement. My, my office, the city, and the police department agree that those heinous acts that were performed in Minneapolis shouldn't happen, and they don't have a place anywhere, especially here in the city of Jackson. Uh, and I think it's important for us to to let people know, those that are protesting, that we stand with them, that they will not be tolerated in the city of Jackson. Saturday, protesters gathered in front of Jackson City Hall for a peaceful demonstration. And on Sunday, they all gathered at Old Hickory Mall and in front of the Madison County Courthouse. People want to be heard, and it's important to let them know that they are being heard. Uh, you know, it's the, the role of this office is to serve the people of Jackson. Uh, that's not just a certain section of people, that's everyone in the city. Local law enforcement paid their respects and tribute to Floyd with a prayer at the end of Sunday night's protest at the courthouse. It's important to let people know that, that their voice is being heard by those that, that have the ability to make decisions.